Welcome back to First Strike. And we are a four-man panel this week for you guys as we dive into UFC Fight Night. I believe it's Vegas 99. It's Pereira Hernandez. And it's another afternoon start. We did some damage the last afternoon start that we had out there. And we're going to do it again here. We started 3.30 p.m. live October 19th there on Saturday. But here we are Wednesday, October 16th. I'm joined with the fellas. Looking to beat these bookies up and give you guys our best early bets to take advantage of lines before they move come fight day here. I've got MMA Jeff. I've got Fanatical Jim. i got Subhuman Gaucho, boys. we got four fights to get into here. To cover this card, we got some great looks for you guys to get after it here. So make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Jeff, how are we feeling? Excited, boys. I'm excited to uh, break this card down coming Saturday. And I believe we got 13 or 12 or 13 fights. So it's uh, it's going to be another exciting one. Well, it's definitely exciting when we have Fanatical Jim. The flamethrower on the bookies is ready to join us again tonight off a big win in his debut. Jim, how are you feeling? Oh, excited to be back. Looking to remain undefeated here on, on first strike. And yeah, as Jeff mentioned, this is a crazy weekend of fighting. We got UFC, PFL, LFA, you name it. Every three-letter acronym we have going on this weekend. So really excited to break down these fights today. Well, speaking of three-letter acronyms, we've got the SUBs that with the sub club, but he's here to give us breakdowns for the UFC first strike staple subhuman gotcha. How are we feeling, sub? Great, man. Great. Um, fun Dana White Contender Series last night. Happy to skate away with a little profit throughout uh, those 10 weeks. So um, looking to keep this momentum from last Saturday uh, rolling, man. It was quite a Saturday and uh, try to repeat that. Let's repeat that indeed here. We're going to get right into it for you guys. We got to get to work because there's a lot of work to do and there's never enough time to do it. So Jeff's going to kick us off. Fight number one He's going to talk to us a little bit about this Johnson opportunity, Jeff. I'm looking forward to hearing how we're getting paid. We got Charles Johnson versus Sumudarji here. Uh, Sumudarji comes in with an impressive 13 KOs, uh, but looks a little lackluster, in my opinion, against this tougher UFC competition. Um, he's coming in off back-to-back -back submission losses, one of those being to uh, Matt Schnell, which is says a lot to his uh, his skill set against these tougher opponents. Matt Schnell, has, that's the only fight he's won of, out of his last six in the last three years. So. You know, he followed that up with a submission loss to Tim Elliott. Um, that was, again, poor ground game. Uh, he lost in round one to, uh, by arm choke. So uh, he's a solid striker, though. He's going to need to keep this one on the feet if he's got any chance of uh, maintaining uh, and trying to get a victory in this one. You got uh, Charles Johnson, on the other hand, and Urgy Johnson. Um, you know, he's a well-rounded fighter. He can strike. He can kick. He can, you know, he can grapple and wrestle you down. Uh, he tends to make these fights a bit more, a bit boring and a bit closer than they typically need to be. Uh, he had a rough 2023 where he lost three in a row. Um, he's on a tear right now. He just won three in a row. Uh, two of those by unanimous decision. And then more impressively, uh, his last fight, he ended. He was getting touched up in the very beginning, uh, first round. And then he ended up uh, pressing forward. And uh, he ended up uh, knocking out Joshua Van, which... Pissed me off a little bit because I was on the Van side of things there. But he also handed Van his first and only KO loss. So uh, I thought that was pretty impressive to show the strength that he does uh, potentially he can put out there. Um, Mudarji should come out fast looking to uh, knock, knock Johnson's head off here. But uh, it's not going to be an easy feat given the fact that Johnson's never been finished. Um, I, I see Johnson uh, doing some punching, some kicking to keep this one at range. Um, if he finds himself into trouble, which he might early on with uh, Sumadarji's pressure he's going to put on him early, uh, he, he's going to probably shoot for a takedown. And as I mentioned, uh, Sumadarji does not have great ground game, or so he has proven he hasn't. Um, as the fight goes on, I think uh, I think Johnson's going to get a little more active. And uh, ultimately, again, if he has to take him down and ride those rounds out, he's certainly going to. Um, I see Johnson <clears throat> potentially getting a Late round finish here, but I also like the look of a decision here. So I'm going to go with Johnson round three or by decision. Uh, I got that at minus 110 on DraftKings. So let's go. Uh, Sub, you're going to roll us on the Elkins Pineda fight, huh? What do you got on this one? All right. So Darren Elkins and Daniel Pineda. This is a real fun one here. Um, you know, Darren Elkins, kind of a legend of this division. Got a boatloads of fight of fights throughout his career, 28 and 11. 
and 28 of those, amazingly, in the UFC. He's 18 and 10 throughout the UFC, and he's fought a real who's who. Uh, he's fought Charles Oliveira back in the day, Chad Mendez, uh, former champion Alexander Volkanovsky. And so it's it's been a great career. It's been a great career. And what he really is specializes at is just pacing guys and, quite frankly, just being tougher. This guy eats a lot of shots. He takes a ton of damage, as his nickname, Darren, the damage Elkins suggests. But he also absorbs a lot of damage. And eventually, he's able to just wear people out. Pretty well-rounded everywhere. Decent striker. You know, pretty good wrestler. Good jiu-jitsu player. So a bit of a jack of all trades that will pace you and use his cardio and his toughness throughout these fights. But he is a he's getting up there in age. He's 40 years old, which is quite advanced for a male featherweight fighter. He's going up against a guy here, Daniel Pineda. Also, a ton of fights in his career. He's 28 and 16. Um, between the two of them, we've got nearly a hundred fights, which is uh, pretty incredible. Daniel Pineda, in some ways, he's kind of the opposite of Darren Elkins. He has real cardio issues, can often fall off a cliff after, you know, seven and a half minutes or so. But he's extremely dangerous. This guy's got really, really heavy hands. I think that's going to be a problem for a guy like Darren Elkins who gets hit a lot. And is uh, I think his, his durability is kind of on the edge. I think we're going to see it really start to drop off at this point. I think we've already seen some signs of that. And a front-loaded fighter like Pineda, I think is going to be a real problem for him. This guy's got a ton of first-round finishes. Five first-round knockouts, 11 first-round subs. Got another eight finishes in the second round. Just three finishes in the third. He's never won a decision. So he's an all-action fighter, real killer be killed. He will get you out of there. He'll go out on his shield. But in this one, I do like the Pineda side. Elkins, you know, it was just a couple years ago. This guy's losing to Jonathan St. Um, or Pierre, pardon me, JSP, Jonathan Pierce, a guy who we faded over the weekend. And when he lost that fight, everybody's saying that Darren Elkins is done and whatnot. Then he comes in and uh, – Gets a win over TJ Brown, who's no longer in the organization. Not awfully impressive. And now you see a bunch of, you know, public money coming in on Elkins. I don't like it. I want to be with Pineda here. I think he gets him out in rounds one or two. So if you want to get more aggressive, just play those round one and round two. That's where he gets most of his finishes anyway. But uh, I'm going to take that inside the distance here on Daniel the Pit Pineda plus 165. All that said, um, let's move on to the next one here. We've got a women's flyweight bout. Mike's going to break down for us. Jessica Penny and Elise Reed, where are you going in this one, Mike? Thanks, Sub. Love that opportunity. A little plus money inside the distance on a little Pineda spot here. And look, you guys have heard me talk about this before. Where do we want to be in a women's fight? We want to be on the favorite, and we want to be on the decision. But not so fast as we look at this opportunity here. Yeah, you match it up odds by odds here. We've got a women's battle. And, you know, we see that on the surface. Pinay, yeah, she's 41. She's almost 42 years old. She's out of Laguna Hills, California. They age differently out there. And uh, we look on the other side here. 31, almost 10 years her younger is Elise Reed. But as we break this thing down, we Dig back a little bit more. We see that well, not all ages are created the same. In fact, as we looked at this fight, as I started thinking about this one here, if you look at the career or the trajectory of Pinay, this girl dealt with a big layoff. Well, why was there a layoff? She dealt with the USADA suspension. She was out of the circuit from 2017 to 2021, not taking that punishment and abuse. And I think that's going to be a big factor as we dig into this thing here. I see Pinay as the more technical fighter. She's going to want to force, you know, the, the other side and Reed to go into deep waters. Uh, she should want to go to the ground. She's got a good chin. I don't expect her to get knocked out. I do think this is an opportunity for judges. But, look, she's got the longer reach. She loves them leg kicks, four-inch advantage, two inches on height as well. And if you want to start to play the ladder game and look at who these fighters dealt with in the past, you know, we've got a situation in Reed. She's a win one, lose one battler. 
Uh, just lost to Lupe Godinez. It was a year ago, a full year off for her. Now we look at this year, almost two years, in the last loss that we saw in um, Pinay. She lost by submission armbar to Tabitha Ricci. And, of course, back-to-back losses in her career. But, look, she's 42, but she's got the fight body of a 36-year-old with that suspension factored in here. So I'm going to negate that age battle there a little bit here. I love the, the reach advantage. I think the smarter fighter been studying the UFC gives us the opportunity to take a big gamble at a plus 150 spot. I expect her in today to get this thing by decision, but challenges, she doesn't have a lot of takedowns. In fact, she hasn't had a takedown in forever. The last takedown she had out there was against Carolina. Kind of more that she slipped. Carolina chased her back to the ground, and then the armbar comes into play here. And, um, you know, I just don't, I don't expect it to follow the same suit. Uh, Reed, on the other hand, has been subbed twice. I'm going to give you guys this opportunity early. As we get closer to fight night, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But I do like a little Pinay opportunity. She's plus 150 as the dog. I know. We look at the favorites. We look at decisions. But I think this is a little bit different. It's too easy to say Reed by decision. And that's priced at plus 105. Now, Pinay, maybe she's alive for submission. Maybe we do catch her sub double prop with an ability to win by decision as well but time will tell at this point though i think the favorite not the favorite and uh pinay give me that plus 150 price gonna be a nice price tag for us to get home and we'll see what we have to do when it comes to fight night itself but we're gonna bring on fanatical jim fresh off a big one and oh on his first strike debut he's gonna talk to us a little uh katona matsumoto jim i'm excited to hear your breakdown and take on this fight Oh, well, thanks, Mike. This is going to be a really exciting fight. We have the up-and-coming prospect in John Matsumoto against a UFC veteran in Brad Katona. And to, to start off with Matsumoto, you know, he gets into the UFC last year in the Contender Series. He gets a decision win against Casey Tanner. And he threw some really deadly strikes in that fight. I was really impressed to see what late kicks he had, um, some of the boxing he had, you know, just the ability to really piece his opponent from distance. And it was really impressive how he got that victory over Casey Tanner. So, he gets to the UFC, he faces Dan Argueta, which if you just watched <laughs> this past week, Dan Argueta versus uh, Cody Cannon. Um, and Argueta is, is a very forward pressure fighter. He has a lot of takedown attempts, and he was able to get nine against Matsumoto. So it's a little concerning if you're Jean Matsumoto in terms of your takedown defense, where you know Dan was able to get nine takedowns against you, and he was winning that fight. He won the first round on all judges' scorecards, 10 to 9. And Matsumoto was also getting taken down in the second round until he pulled guillotine and ended up winning in that second round by sub. So he remains undefeated, and he takes on Brad Katona, who is a very durable fighter. He's a decision fighter. He's a points fighter. Um, he does enough to win two of three rounds, or he'll barely lose the third, but he will be in the fight. He has great cardio. He has decent boxing. He has good grappling. Um, you know... The thing when, when I look at Brett Katona is, who has he really beat, right? If you look at his resume, he's coming off a win against Jesse Butler. Jesse Butler's 0-2 in the UFC. He won against Cody Gibson, which was a great fight. I believe it was fight of the night, going back to uh, August of 2023. And um, he threw 160 significant strikes in that fight. So that was probably the best I've ever seen him. But that was, that was it. I mean, the last win before that was in 2018. So and to be fair, he had a few years off in between, but... He just, he's the type of guy that will beat opponents that he should beat. And when he faces a superior opponents or opponents that can get him on the feet, he doesn't do well. Um, and, and I think this is the same thing is going to happen here. I think with John Matsumoto, I think he's going to be able to fight from distance. You know, Katona's probably going to get a couple of takedowns here. But if you look at Katona's fight against Garrett Armfield, he was, he took Armfield down four times. It didn't matter. Armfield got back up, kept distance, kept striking and eventually got the decision win. I think Matsumoto's going to do the same thing. You're going to see Matsumoto get taken out a couple of times. I think he's good scrambling. He'll get up. He'll go in the clinch. He'll throw great knees, good leg kicks, eventually beat him up on the feet. And I think Matsumoto will get the decision win. I got that at minus 110. Now, I also took fight to end by split decision at plus 300. So there's a method to my madness here. Um, obviously, my biggest position is on the Jean decision. And you know, I'm not going to tell you how to manage your money. But I did take split because what I've seen from Matsumoto, especially in the UFC, and what you see from Brad Katona is their fights are very, very close. 
And we don't know what these judges are going to do, whether or not they factor in control time over striking equity. So if, if you know, Jean Mas uh, Masamoto is really damaging Katona on the feed, maybe you'll have a judge or two that favors that. But maybe Katona got a couple of minutes of, of control time in round one and round two. And maybe I'll the judge that say, you know what, I actually like that. So I don't want to get screwed here either way. So I'm, I'm taking the plus 300. It's a little bit lower for a split line. I don't mind it here, though, because there is, I mean, you're talking about two guys that probability of going to decision is very high. Um, so I don't mind taking a little bit of, you know, you want to call it a hedge, take a little bit of money there and taking that plus 300. So once again, my plays are Jean Matsumoto by decision at minus 110 and fight ends by split decision at plus 300. So with that being said, let's go over the recap of all of these fights. Great job, boys. UFC Vegas 99. We got fight night. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys did a great job with the breakdowns tonight. Excited to be after it here with some great plus money looks here. We've got Johnson round three or decision from MMA Jeff at minus 110. Pineda inside the distance from subhuman gacho at plus 165. I'm giving you a Pine. Plus 150, we'll talk about more of the prop bets to get after it later on. And uh, we've got Matsumoto decision from Fanatical Gym at minus 110. He likes that fight to end in split decision at plus 300 as well. And I'm excited, fellas. It's going to be a lot of fun getting back together with you guys, sharing a pop, sharing some wins, talking some smack, and all the things that we do that make our Saturday so special. Uh, on behalf of the UFC First Strike crew, all the folks at Sports Money, Fanatical Gym, MMA Jeff, Subhuman Gaucho. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, and we'll see you guys live on Saturday. We'll pop off at 3.30 p.m. Get that money together, and uh, thank you guys for watching.